Hi, welcome to another preview for Clark Auction. Here to my right hand side we have a nice papier mache figure, some of the crew seem to think it's a replica of me, but uh, this is by a guy called Kay Ritter. He has a cat and a dog with him and actually sits on a bench. It's not me because I have two big dogs. But Anyway, enough said, we're glad to have a sail on after all this snow and stuff, or some of my crew are out, our trucks are going down, but we have another great load. You can generally see what we have here, we have this magnificent Victorian table, probably a big maker like Herter or someone like this. Bronze mounted, burl walnut, beautiful ebony and satin wood inlays on it. Nice urn in the center came from a East 71st Street big townhouse. Looking around, we got lots of art because it's African history a month this month. We have a big collection of African American art, which Neelia will get into more detail about. And also a large collection of important photographs by a portrait photographer called Arnold Newman. Once again, Neelia will explain all that later. I'm going to give you a quick generalization of the sale so that it gets you excited and ready to come. As per every sale, we have another Stein, Steinway piano. Nice black lacquered one, probably from the 30s. Into the main room, Steve, look, loads and loads of stuff. We got mid-century, we got used furniture, we got antiques, we got art, we got porcelains, mirrors, rugs, the full Monty. Moving up here, Steve. As you can see on the walls, there's plenty of art. Bruce, Neelia, Whitney and Keane will go through all this in detail as I've got an Irish memory and it doesn't hang in too long. Good for buying, but not good for remembering. Of note in the sale, we have this very nice W.M. Cummins clock. It's an American clock, quite an important maker. Got a bit of damage on the glass, but apart from that, it's in pretty nice shape, all original. We're hoping this does pretty good. Uh, lots of tables, carpets, plenty of carpets, lots of mirrors. We have lots of pairs of consoles, pairs of chairs. This is a beautiful Kindle dining set, nicely banded with a set of eight chairs. And on top of what I really like in the sale, we have this beautiful patinated bronze heron. I believe it's by an artist who I believe died last year called Elliot Hoffner. But beautiful quality, nice, nice bronze. Good investment, I would say. Moving right along here, Steve, we've got sconces, more mirrors. Look at this huge Persian, I would call it, steel and possibly silver inlaid chandelier. Just look at the size of it by me standing along it. You see we've got lots of Asian items Bruce will get into. Over here, Rococo mirrors, Scots sideboards, marble top sideboards. In the back room, bear in mind some of my crew are out, so we had to do this ourselves. A bit of a quagmire and a bit of a mess, but it's loaded to the gills. We got American furniture, French furniture, pairs of empire, cabinets, Italian furniture, mid-century etagers, Asian vitrines. And before I finish off, we'll just go down this last section, Steve. We've got this beautiful, beautiful bronze table came from the uh, East 71st Street house. Couldn't find a signature, but nice figure, a beautiful weight. Good table, nice quality items in that house. Moving right along, Steve, you can see chandeliers, chachkas, silver, Bruce, Whitney, and everyone will get into this. And right now, I'm going to hand you over to Bruce, and I look forward to seeing you at the sale. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. One of my favorite items, not only in this sale, but that I've ever had the pleasure to handle is this pair of aesthetic movement English Minton Jardinaires with elephant bases, elephant handles, it's transfer printed ceramic from the Minton factory, stamped everywhere. There's damages and they're going to need restoration, especially on the tips of the elephant tusks, but they're so rare and I don't know, maybe they could be Christopher Dresser, I'm not sure who the designer might be, but quite a find, and we hope that these do very well. And Steve, we were lucky enough this time, again, to have a, an estate in Scarsdale, where the woman's mother was a sophisticated collector, and she, we, she inherited these things, and now we have them here to sell. A good antique Chinese celadon signed, impressed signature in the bottom. It's got a little chip down here in the corner, but I don't think that's so important. A nice big pair of, or a nice sized pair of glazed figures, attendants, immortal attendants. And a big roof tile, or what they call a roof tile, of this galloping horse and Rider, warrior, maybe. Really good age, probably Ming. 
from the same house, also signed, a good celadon lube charger with enamel decoration, sort of stylized bats, very well signed on the back. Also from the same house, another celadon charger, and this one's probably Ming. I think there's no doubt about it. It's got an old stair label, stair and company label on it. And for, again from that house is a, a good Tibetan Tonka. Oop. With a silk uh, border. Hope you can see the details of that. Good age on this one. I'm going to just stay on that house for one minute. Also signed an iron red Chinese decorated low bowl. Well signed on the back. I think mark and, and period. And there and from our walk-in Wednesday is a beautiful 19th century Chinese urn, covered urn, also signed, Famille Vert, orange background, nearly mint condition, one tiny little chip on the inside of the rim means nothing. And here from Arias State, an antique Chinese fishbowl or jardinier, beautifully painted. Look at the detail of that sort of phoenix bird. And from Walk-In Wednesday, probably 20th century, but a Chinese Fa Qua vase with characters around the shoulder. Good, good early 20th century. And in this case are more Chinese things, if you can look through. Most of it came from our Scarsdale. There's a nice lot. This is probably Song Dynasty here. It's part of a tray lot. We try to make very interesting and generous tray lots. And from our Scarsdale estate, you can't see the scale on our website. This big, I think 19th century, maybe Cambodian, bronze seated Buddha. Good age, nice presence, beautiful piece of sculpture. And here one of Several antique Chinese hardwood stands. This is an unusual low, low stand, low rectangular stand. And from Araya State, I think this one's going to be Japanese. 19th century, red lacquer and gilding, black lacquer top. The top needs a little bit of work, but what a beautiful, beautiful pedestal. Also from Rai are three Chinese hardwood stands, antique ones with inset marble tops, one lot of two and one single. You can see the details again on our website. Not antique, but the highest quality, a, a beautiful little Regent style card table with a leather top and four companion chairs. More French style furniture and original creme paint, I guess you'd say is a nice scale pair of oval back chairs. And over here, Steve, a bull, a bull cabinet, French bull cabinet, bronze mounted, open front. And here a very unusual piece, a, a polished steel over mantel mirror, probably English, maybe had a conforming uh, fireplace at one point. A Venetian marble top Bombay, small commode and matching mirror, early 20th century, but in good original paint and condition. And from the same Rye estate, a chinoiserie decorated desk. And here a pair of antique Empire mahogany cabinets, a matched pair with faux drawers, it's a cupboard door. Neoclassical bronze hardware here, the escutcheons, all original. Very hard to find a pair. Here's the other one, Steve. Well worth, well worth the trouble to have these restored, I think. And so far a crowd favorite. 
a Hepa White server, unusual Hepa White server. We called it possibly Scottish. That's probably what it is. Very unusual form. And a lot of people like this sideboard already. And here, one, here, one of the pieces of Venetian style furniture, a paint decorated secretary with kind of ruin, Roman ruin decoration. A matched pair of these Louis XVI style marble top consoles. Again, just early to mid 20th century, but beautiful quality. Same, from the same storage unit, a matched pair of early 20th century mirrors. And here a 19th century bone or ivory inlaid credenza. Needs a little bit of cleaning up, but what a handsome piece of furniture. From our Rye estate, a 19th century brightly gilded, original gilding. It's a mirror now. Originally it was a painting frame, surely. And Steve, I'll end with another paint decorated Venetian style secretary from our Rye estate with these wonderful little etched glass panels of colonial figures on each side. And that's going to wrap it up for me today. I'm going to turn it over to Neely and we hope to see you at the auction. Thank you, Bruce. I want to start by talking about the large collection of photographs that we have this sale. We've got about 13 lots of Arnold Newman photography. Uh, here you can see on my left, we've got three out of the 13. Uh, we have, these come from actually the estate of his physician in New York. Um, and Arnold Newman, as you can see in this photograph of Senator JFK here, was known for his environmental portraits. He was very careful about selecting a setting in which to photograph uh, his sitters. So here we've got JFK leaning against the beautiful columns here in a Washington DC building, government building. Uh, down below we have Leonard Bernstein, the composer sitting, you know, right looking out uh, upon the, the audience with the empty chairs. Looks like he's deep in his work. Uh, and this is a wonderful collection. Each one is estimated at two to three thousand. They're all hand signed and personally dedicated by Arnold Newman to, as I said, his physician Al Lowy. Now I'm going to move on to talk about African American art. Here we are in February, we're celebrating Black History Month. Uh, and just behind me are two very important works by Romar Bearden, probably one of the most famous African American artists of our day. This here, a mixed media collage titled The Black American in Search of His Identity. During the height of the Civil Rights Movement, this was commissioned by the Brooklyn League of Afro-American Collegians and Brooklyn College. It was actually commissioned to be the cover of an exhibition catalog showcasing African-American art from the 1950s and beyond. And here we have wonderful uh, imagery of the Civil Rights Movement. You have Martin Luther King just juxtaposed against images of blacks being abused by the government, by the police, um, as well as other black leaders and figures, and just across a nice African mask. And here we have the artist trying to make sense of all of the experiences, uh, the cultural and social exper experiences. So a very important uh, social work now coming on the 50th anniversary of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Uh, so this is being auctioned with a six to $9,000 estimate, though I think the importance of it uh, will lift it up above that, at least we hope so. And just down below, we have a photostat projection, also by Romar Bearden. And this is from his, one of his most famous series, The Prevalence of Ritual, and this is called Conjure Woman. Uh, Conjure Woman here, uh, kind of brings us back to African culture, some of the Southern American culture, black culture. We have uh, a medicine woman essentially being one with nature. She used to mix uh, potions and medicines for the local you know, rural people. Uh, this culture was then brought up to the north as people migrated upwards. This uh, entire series was at one point ex exhibited in MoMA. Um, here a projection of the collage estimated at three to 5,000. This is from the same collection as the Romart Bearden collage above. Also by Bearden, we have lithographs, we have aquatints, so a really beautiful collection of, of works from this same collector. And just down here, 
I want to talk about this marble sculpture. Now this is actually from a, a Chicago estate and this is by the very well-known, well-celebrated Chicago sculptor and also activist in the 1950s and 60s, Marion Perkins. So here we have a beautiful bust and this is actually of a friend of Perkins, Betty Mitchell. Betty Mitchell was the wife of Mitchell Catton, another Chicago artist, uh, muralist. And I'm just gonna spin it around. It is on a swivel base here. We've got a, a nice initial down here. Just a little bit dirty, but otherwise in beautiful condition. Really nice bust. This is conservatively estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. The Chicago Art Institute has most of the pieces in its collection. Uh, not many Perkins have come to market, so I'm excited to see where this one goes. And quickly, just below that, this is also a portrait of Bet Betty Mitchell, and this is by Mitchell Catton, Betty Mitchell's husband. A uh, really nice pastel. Another important piece of African American art is this work here by Alexander Bogosian, or Skunder, as he was more commonly called. Uh, Skunder was an Ethiopian-born artist. He worked in the United States. He taught at Howard University for 20-some-odd years. Uh, this work is a mixed media on bark, actually, so an unusual medium. This is entitled Shades of Evening Along the Nile. So here, very much bringing back his African past. We see a lot of nice abstract, but somewhat tribal imagery. Beautiful use of color. I love the, the palette here. It is a dark scene, an evening scene, but you have some beautiful blues and greens um, in this composition. Uh, this is estimated at two to four thousand, or two to three thousand, uh, but I think an important painting. And just as we move along, I want to show you this piece. Uh, we've had several by this artist. This is Daniel LaRue Johnson, a nice big abstract canvas done in the late 1960s. We've got a signature on the back. This will be offered with a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar auction estimate. From the same collection as the Beardens, the Skunder Bogosian, and a lot of other pieces in this sale come the works by Norman Lewis. This is one of four. It's an abstract oil on paper. We have a procession scene. Here a very figurative piece. We have others that are in a little more of an abstract vein. This one has a very green palette. He does use a lot of color in the other pieces. Uh, and Norman Lewis really did not want to be an artist who was known for being black and being African. He wanted to be an abstract artist, recognized for his artistic ability, his composition, his use of color, and really studied art history, You know, took things from uh, other artists, uh, Ad Reinhardt, for instance, also from jazz motifs, uh, to create really interesting compositions. So this, again, one of four pieces. This one's estimated at eight to 12,000. We have another at eight to 12,000 and two at six to 9,000. Now I'm gonna talk about a more traditional piece. This oil here by, attributed to Jean-Baptiste Gruz, a French 18th century to early 19th century artist of a young girl. Now this has been restored and lined a little bit. Uh, we do see signs of age here, but unfortunately does not have a signature. Uh, we do hope that it is by the artist, but we can't say for sure. Regardless, it's beautifully done. The execution is, is wonderful. The tones in her face are just marvelous. Um, and again, shows signs of legitimate age. This is estimated at a conservative 15 to 2,500. From a Rye, New York estate, comes this work up here, a 19th century oil on panel by Franz Verhaas. This actually came in on a walk-in Wednesday. It's a beautiful painting of a young woman reading to her son, and I just think the details in here are absolutely exquisite. Uh, we have in the background, you know, an Asian style stand with a plant. You can see through to the pedestal in the back with a, possibly a fountain through the window. We have this beautiful, uh, exotic tapestry tablecloth. You can make out the details in the carpet. I just think there are so many fascinating things about this painting. So excited to have it. This is by a Belgian artist, uh, estimated at $2,000 to $4,000. I want to briefly show you this gouache here, a nice art deco pa painting by Georges Le Pop. And it's kind of a fashion illustration. Here we have this woman with elongated arms, elongated figure among the orange trees. I just think it's a really nice Art Deco piece, early 20th century uh, by the French illustrator and artist. Also from a walk-in Wednesday consignment, but a different estate, 
comes this beautiful oil on panel by Luis Jimenez Aranda. Wonderful painting of a woman seated on the ledge. You can see the beautiful tassels hanging from her scarf, the wonderful fan in her hand. Painter was a Spanish artist working in France. We do have a signature and a date in the lower right corner. Uh, I believe it's a late 19th century painting. I just think it's absolutely magnificent. This is estimated again at 2,000 to 4,000. From the same consigner is this oil on canvas down here by Louis Moeller. Now this painting is called Gratitude. And here we have an elderly couple sitting at the table probably saying grace before a meal. Uh, what was exciting about this work is we had a little trouble identifying it. Uh, the signature is down on the lower right cut off by the frame. Uh, again, a very highly detailed painting and we knew it had to be someone spectacular. And when we did finally ID it, we actually were able to pull up an auction catalog, uh, which we have an example of here, but is also on our website. And this was from an auction in 1899 from the uh, estate or collection of Thomas B. Clark. And we actually found reference to this exact painting listed as lot number 41 in the catalog. Uh, they describe it in detail, an old couple before the evening meal sit down of, uh, with attitudes of devotion and ask a blessing. So here we have the painting. We have a, an In God We Trust uh, tapestry just above their heads. So really excited about this work and that we are able to find full provenance on it, uh, estimated at two to $3,000. From a brownstone on East 71st Street comes this nice large oil on canvas. Big industrial painting done in 1943 by Carl Sizek. Not many pieces by Sizek have come to auction, but we think this is a pretty spectacular scene. Uh, nice retreating perspective in the back with figures down in front, uh, working hard. This painted during World War Two uh, and done by the Austrian painter. Now you can see there is a bit of condition, uh, you know, problems here. We have heavy, heavy crack allure and cracking throughout the painting and very, very minor losses, uh, but this will need to be restored and brought back to life. Probably needs a cleaning too, uh, but really a, a spectacular image estimated at 600 to 900. The last lot I wanna show you is a pair of paintings by Carl Quadleg. And these paintings are done by the Dutch painter and here we have corn threshers in an Italian countryside. And they're small images, but there's quite a lot going on. Very finely executed. We have a beautiful landscape in the background with the horses working hard against the hay here. You even got figures down by the water. Uh, this has been lined and laid on a panel, but is in generally good condition. Some minor in painting. The other one just across the way. We have figures along the Via Appia. You have travelers with their weary horses down here. Beautiful architectural ruins depicted. Here we have the burial mound up here to the right and signatures on both works. They'll be offered together as a pair at three to $5,000. Again, just a small taste of what we have coming up. There are over 100 pieces of artwork in this auction, so we hope you'll join us on Sunday the 23rd. And here's Keen with some of the mid-century. Thank you. Thank you, Nelia. We have a wide variety of mid-century, all good stuff coming up on February 23rd. And I'll start right here with this Paul McCobb style desk, unmarked, but obviously in the Paul McCobb style, one of his more famous models on top, some Swedish nesting tables, a beautiful Swedish sideboard credenza that just came in, nice swirling inlay on the front, big brass pulls, and this nice fitted interior. Marked, made in Sweden on the back. Designer unknown, but like a lot of the unknown pieces, a very unique look to it. A nice pedestal base, mid-century German table with these macabre style cane back chairs. A great taper on the legs. Could use some reupholstering, a little bit of uh, wear there, but and the cane has a few issues, but a great shape to the frame. Some of the cane is perfect on some of the chairs as well. Another credenza behind you is a beautiful tambour front. Very unique, a Kagan-esque, Kagan style with the biomorphic handles. Nice glass mirrored interior, fitted glass. Tambour doors, always a nice accent to a sideboard. More sideboards here, credenzas. is. Beautiful set here is a white painted front with the hourglass poles, again in the macabre style. Um, this one is the four drawer folding door with a nice 
wide shelving. The shelves on the bottom there, just not installed. Two drawer side table on top. Another sideboard. And one of my favorite pieces in the sale and one of the highly, most highly recognizable is this Paul Evans Cityscape dining table. One of his bigger dining tables, one of the bigger base models that is just gorgeous. There's no lifting, no issues with the chrome panels on that. A nice heavy glass on top. A very modern look, a very sleek and elegant design as, as Paul Evans is usually known for. And if you'll allow me for a second to stretch the definition of the mid-century time span, we'll, have, we'll go into the late 70s, early 80s, where the tessellation, the bone, was very popular. You'll see that we have several pieces, including a parchment uh, mirror and a vanity, which I'll show you in a second, or a vitrine, I should say. Uh, tessellated bone, brass inlay, beautiful American sideboard server, all drawers on the interior and shelves. Great look, clean. Another tessellated bone. You can see the marrow on the inside of this. A little bit of cracking and separation, but nothing a little varnish won't fix. That's another one of the mirrors. Here's the last uh, parchment ghost skin piece I was just speaking about. A nice chrome warped inlay on the top or inset. Beautiful glass shelves, doors on the bottom and the top. A great display piece. And seemingly from the same era, maybe mid 70s, maybe early 80s as well, are these Springer style Asian modern brass chairs. A great suede cushion on them. A little bit of staining, but they are in great condition otherwise. Okay, so now I'll show you two of the most important pieces in the sale, both by Hans Wagner. This one is a rare desk three drawer. Little bit of wear on the front, otherwise in great condition, by Andreas Tuck, who manufactured it. This one's nice because it has the dr double drop side. Usually you see with the one drop side. This one does have both. All the mechanisms that keep them up are in great condition. All the accents on this scream Hans Wagner, and Hans Wagner is the best of the best when it comes to Danish modern. Also by Hans Wagner, these two, a pair of these oak, Lounge chairs, great spring seats to these, great age, both marked with the Danish Control, Hans Wegner, and they are by uh, the AP Stolen Manufacturing Company. Two more examples of some mid-century design elements in the form of sculptures are these two beautiful, unique brass fish by Chapman around 1974, 1975. Uh, they are signed and labeled at the bottom. And they are sitting upon this nice, loosely defined mid-century quote-unquote piece from the 1980s by Betty Kalpon Pugh. It's one of her consoles from the Sculptura line, which exemplifies her need to have no hard edges, as she says, on the furniture that she makes. So there's no corners. In essence, there's no corners. There's no sharp edges or sharp sides to any of her pieces, and this is one example of that ideal. Okay. Just want to hit on one piece in here, Steve, is this very large rounded double rim and uh, black inset uh, mirror in the style of Carl Springer. It's very large, great size to it, great look. Again with the tessellation, it's a uh, true bone tessellation. There's one loss on one of the sides, not a very big deal. Um, overall, especially from the front and from most of the sides, it is just a gorgeous piece, gorgeous accent, and a gorgeous example of what tessellation can really give you in a design aspect. And some of the last pieces I'll show you, but not the last pieces in the sale, will be this nice curved sofa, great mid-century base to it with the L and U shaped uh, feet to that. Matching that sofa is another piece that's included in the lot is this biomorphic kind of organic form coffee table with the same base to that. And just as a little icing on the cake, we'll throw in this little uh, side table, just a little bookshelf or, or shelving unit that uh, came out of the same estate that was situated with the couch as you see it here. Some more pieces, uh, two Jens Rism 
signed and labeled blonde wood lounge chairs, including with the ottoman, a Parsinger style brass center table in the barrel form, a nice Vatne Mobler Norwegian sofa with leather cushions and backs, and a nice uh, bent wood arm to this. And I'll finish off here, Steve, with another piece of uh, mid-century design, this time in the form of art by Ella Marie Woolley. She was a pioneer in the mid-century artistic movement of enamel use. Her and her husband Jackson Woolley uh, used enamel, sometimes on copper, but on a variety of materials. And this is one of her shining examples of her style, her use of materials, and it just has that quintessential mid-century design look. It's a very large size, and once again, it just really exemplifies the use of enamel in mid-century design and art. And like I said, they're both pioneers, and this is something that we are very happy to have in the sale. So I'll shoot you over to Whitney now, and I expect to see everyone there on February the 23rd. Thank you. Thank you, Keen. And starting off our selection of jewelry and sterling for this auction, I'm going to start with this beautiful Austrian-Hungarian flatware set. It is a very large grouping of flatware out of a Manhattan estate, and it does weigh nearly 150 troy ounces. And moving on to our first piece of jewelry, also out of a Manhattan estate, is this beautiful 18 karat carved coral palm tree form brooch with beautiful diamond accents. A very interesting piece. And from one of, one of our walk-in days are these two 14 karat Tiffany & Company bamboo form pens. And a grouping of three men's cufflinks are, is this group here. Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold cufflinks we have a pair of 14 karat gold cufflinks, and lastly, a pair of Italian 18 karat gold cufflinks. A nice little set here. And moving on to an interesting piece is a carved lava cameo brooch, which I do quite like. And here from the same Manhattan estate is a 14 karat yellow gold and carved coral fish form brooch with nice little diamond accents. And from the same estate is this 18 karat gold medallion form brooch of Poseidon, quite heavy, weighing nearly 30 penny weights. And here we have an 18 karat yellow gold oval pierced foliate form brooch with, diamond, with sapphires and rubies. And one of my very favorite pieces in this auction is this 18 karat yellow gold enamel and diamond form brooch with really great enamel work on the eyes here. And moving away from jewelry and sterling for a minute, Bruce Anderson asked me to touch on this piece, which is a really lovely, deeply carved jade plaque with birds and flowers. And out of a Scarsdale estate, we're showing two of six silver plate Sheffield candlesticks by the company S.C. Young and Company. And these are early to mid 19th century. From the same Scarsdale estate is this large multi-piece silver grouping. Some of it's sterling, some of it's continental silver. Here's an interesting sterling piece by Alicia Art of an Artichoke. We have these Gorham wishbone form tongs. Nice pair of continental silver vases, a little hand hammered bowl. We have a gilded sterling vanity set. And from the same Scarsdale estate are these three very heavy 20th century Italian chargers. They do have a maker's mark of FC on the back and very heavy, weighing in at over 75 troy ounces. And last but not least from the same Scarsdale estate is this oval hand hammered reticulated edge serving tray. Also a very heavy piece in this auction. And that wraps it up for my segment and we hope to see you at our auction this Sunday, February 23rd. Thank you.